So lately my entire TikTok for you page and YouTube recommended page is filled with aesthetic cake baking videos and I've been brainwashed into thinking I can do it too. So I decided today to make a Pinterest inspired cake. The first thing I did was buy some cake mix, piping tips, and frosting as well as food coloring in order to make this cake. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that I've posted a cake that I made one or two times and that's basically the only experience I have. I'm just following the recipe on the cake mix box. Before we start the baking, I'd just like to say that you should watch the entire video because there's a little unboxing surprise towards the middle. Anyways, while you watch me open up the box, let's talk a bit more about my cake baking experience. I literally just watch cake TikToks and tape tips from those to make a cake. You'll see from the end result that I'm definitely not a professional, but I did my best. Anyways, this recipe calls for a cup of water, half a cup of oil, and three eggs. But I don't really use oil because I found that substituting water for oil makes the exact same cake and it's even healthier, so that's what I'm doing for this cake. While I'm adding the eggs, let's talk about the content that I'm making so far. I feel like talking in videos is so much easier than just putting text. It really reduces the amount of work I have to put in to edit my videos, and I really like that a lot. But I'm sort of running out of video ideas to make, so if there's anything in particular that you want me to make on this channel, please let me know in the comments. And now that we've had all the ingredients put into this mixing cup, let's grab a pair of chopsticks and mix it up until it, the cake is a sort of smooth texture. Then we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, which I probably should have done in the beginning, but oh well, we're just going to have to wait a bit longer. Also remember to take parchment paper and line your pan so that the cake doesn't stick to the pan and crumble apart. Last time I made a cake, I think I undercooked it a bit, so it was very crumbly, and as soon as I tried to pry it from the pan, it just crumbled, and decorating it was such a hard task. This time I also took some cooking spray and sprayed that on the pan, which really helped in the end, so I think I'm going to start doing that from now on. This footage of pouring the cake batter kind of reminds me of slime. I don't know if any of you have that same phase of being obsessed, but I did when I was younger, and I actually had multiple accounts for slime until it fizzled out, and I just moved on from that phase. I would spend so much time on those accounts, it was actually crazy. Anyways, we're going to pop this into the oven. The instructions said to bake for, bake for 30 minutes, so I set a timer on my phone. And of course, you always have to remember to clean up after baking because things can get super messy really, really quickly. Okay, now that we have the cake in the oven and we're just waiting, I want to talk a little bit more about this company called Rose Forever that sent me a really nice package. Rose Forever is a company based in New York specialized in long-lasting rose arrangements made of 100% natural fresh flowers. These natural oils to preserve the roses and the bouquets are handcrafted by professional rose artisans. On their website, which is in the description, they have all sorts of options that are all super pretty. I got this dark velvet gray color and it's honestly a perfect decoration for my room because it matches the aesthetic really well. You can use my code HONEYPOT15 for $15 off at checkout. I highly recommend that you check them out, check my description for all these links. And now back to the video. So obviously we have to try and find a cake design, which is my favorite part of making cakes. Honestly, if I could do anything for a living, I would just frost and design cakes all day. I love scrolling through Pinterest to find these cakes to recreate, and this is one of my boards. We have sort of a sage green color theme going on, which has really been popular lately. I'm going to take elements of each of these cakes and combine it into a final design. Keep in mind that I haven't taken the cake out of the oven yet, so I don't know what it'll look like or if it'll have enough frosting, so I don't think this design will be exactly the same. But I can tell you that the end result is actually pretty similar to what I drew on this paper. I have no idea why I decided to put the words XOXO when I literally could have done anything else, but I thought it was aesthetically pleasing, I guess. And this is my cake plan. Once the cake comes out of the oven, we will put this plan into action. Here's a little tip whenever you're baking a cake and you want to see if it's ready or not. Get a chopstick, stick it down the middle, and see if it comes out clean or not. If it's clean, then the cake is ready because it's already formed to be a solid instead of that liquidy cake batter. Let me tell you, when I took this cake out, the smell was heavenly. I literally just wanted to eat it right away instead of decorating because this cake smelled amazing and I wasn't even that hungry because I had just eaten lunch. So after letting the cake cool down for about 10 minutes, I decided to take it out of the pan and onto a plate where I could decorate. I also took a knife and cut the cake into a circle because those circles are supposedly easier to decorate compared to square cakes. I don't have a rotating cake spinner or cake scraper, which I actually really want, but that's okay and I may do with what I had. With my leftover cake pieces, I was contemplating making a frog cake, but I decided to just stick with my design and eat the leftover cake pieces, which were really, really good. Now it's time to decorate. Back to the cabinet. I grabbed a can of frosting, which is usually enough to cover the entire cake, piping tips, and food coloring. So this is when my cake plan came into play. 
I could plan for the different colors I was going to use, and so I separated some frosting to save to dye to red later for the red flowers. The remaining frosting was going to be dyed a light green and then a darker green for the edges and flower stems. Then, since I've seen creators on TikTok do what's called a crumb coat first, I decided to do the same thing. This is just a very light layer of frosting so that the crumbs don't stick to the frosting later on in the final coat and make it look messy. I personally think this time lapse was super satisfying and decorating took me a really long time, so enjoy. After letting the cake chill in the refrigerator for about an hour, which was honestly really hard because I'm an impatient person, I was back and doing a final coat. This is really satisfying, so um, I'll just let you enjoy. So after doing the final coat, I dyed the remaining green frosting an even darker shade for the details on the edges and the flower stems, just like the plan said. I have no idea if my technique is off or something, but putting frosting into a piping bag has to be the hardest part of making cake. For some reason, my frosting always leaks out from the top, and I can't do anything about it. If you're a cake expert or you know anything about that, please leave some comments down below. Anyways, here I am, making a bottom border to hide all the cracks and edges that weren't properly frosted. The cake plan, if you remember, actually said to do a border on the top as well, but I was running out of frosting, so I just decided against that because I wanted to prevent having to open up another can of frosting. Keep in mind that I had been working on this cake since the morning. So after doing the bottom, I switched my tip to a thinner one and started to make the stems. Right now, it looks a little bit wonky, but I promise that once we add the red, everything will make so much more sense. After tons of hard work, um, I just decided to do the red frosting now, and as you can see, I'm adding the buds to the flowers. I'll, I'll just let you enjoy the rest of the cake decorating montage. After tons of hard work, here is the final cake result. I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. I already posted this result on my Instagram story days ago and a lot of people complimented it, which definitely kind of boosts my ego. But anyways, this is one of the best cakes I've made so far. The top definitely looks a bit spiky, but I learned a new way to make hearts with frosting on the cake, so that's pretty cool. The cake also tasted really, really good, and the inside was funfetti from the cake mix. If I could, I would mail some pieces of the cake to my subscribers because this was heavenly. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for 5k followers. I hit that milestone a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot to mention it, but I'm really grateful. I hope I can make this series of cake baking on my channel, so I hope I see you next time with a new cake plan. Bye!